Hey there, my name's Taylor. Whether I'm traveling by air, land, or sea, I want to use my skills and various methods of travel to explore our beautiful planet. Subscribe to join me as I navigate life with my sense of adventure as my compass. Hey guys, this week's episode is going to be a little bit different. I'll be taking you along with me for a tour of a couple of young cruisers home on the water. So hey, I'm Jesse. I'm Sarah. And this is our 1978 Tiana Mariner 36. Kyle Lua. Actually, I met Jesse and Sarah because we were anchored pretty much right beside them. So Delos is over there, and we've uh, been hanging out at the beach together, just having a good time here. But I really appreciate you guys inviting me over and letting me have a tour of her. All right, so this is our Ford Master Cabin, and this is where we sleep. We got our garage in here with our sail locker, a little storage closet, more storage, nice headroom. And then we have a private entrance to the head and then a second entrance right here. So this is our head, it's pretty standard. It's got a manual pump. We replaced the actual head, kept the original seat cover. It's got the Mariner logo on it some tile here so it doesn't seem so small and it actually doubles as a hanging locker for us. This is our uh, salon area. We have the main distribution panel here. It does run all of our DC and AC offshore power, uh, B&G V60 VHF radio, uh, the old Fusion over there. Uh, that one was given to us by Brad off Restless Native. Big shout out, we partied hard with it. Thank you, Brad. <laughs> and then there's the galley there. I'll turn it over to Sarah. The galley! I love the galley because we got the gimbal stove while you're cooking underway. Nothing spills. Cute little spice rack that was built in on the boat. Got a fridge over here. And then, let's see, sink. We just installed this like a month ago. We had this, um, janky stainless steel faucet that we replaced. So now it looks nice. Looks kind of homey. Makes it feel less of a boat galley. More of a nice kitchen. So this is our quarter berth aka garage number two or when we have people we clear it out and they can sleep there. Uh, most important part about the quarter berth is it does house our uh, autopilot's computer and both of our charge controllers and they're way in the back there. So one of the first things that I really noticed coming in here was this beautiful woodwork up here. So this, it kind of took us a little bit to figure out what it meant, since it's obviously not in English, but we figured out that it meant One wind sail good. Which is um, kind of like a Chinese proverb for bon voyage, um, safe journeys. Proprietous winds on your travels. We had to have a Chinese friend come out here and read it for us. But, That's um, so cool. Well, that seems like a good omen to me. Yeah, me too. The two dragons, which I originally thought, I've come to find out most Tiana Mariner 36s have this, but uh, ours is named Kailua, which means where two currents converge. So That's I thought we neat. had some custom yeah, wood work. Yeah, with the two dragons. But it's, it's still and... cool. Come on, check out the cockpit outside. My favorite part of the boat. This is the cockpit. This is where we usually hang out. We got our bean bags right here, our helm, and then a nice little grill. We built this hard top, which is pretty cool. Jesse will tell you about that. We got our toys outside, our kite boards strapped up to the side of the deck over here, our motor mount. Jesse also built. We just got that done like a month ago. So if you go cruising, shop our motor to it. So here we had our, uh, we have a full suite of BNG. Did pretty good on all that. So we have a Zeus 3, a uh, 9 inch here. This is just a little MFD. We have a below deck autopilot with a uh, NAC 3 core pack. That's another BNG deal there. Um, most of it happens right here, you know. 
autopilot control right there. This one just gives us whatever information we want at the time. Um, this is actually an old autopilot that we had that worked pretty well up to about 16 knots, which is when the boat really likes it. So we kind of had to upgrade that. Um, so that's what's going on with the electronics here. And you installed uh, all that yourself? We installed it all ourselves, yeah. It was wow. a mission. It was a lot of YouTube. It was a lot of uh, trial and error. Yes, that's the um, way to do it. So yeah, we did the damn thing. Hard top up here. A huge shout out to my mother for letting me tear her garage up for six months building it. It was a huge mission to make it, but we actually built the hard top ourselves. Uh, and really one of the only things we couldn't do ourselves on the boat was weld aluminum. So all of the uh, aluminum that has been welded has been done by Robert Sherman in Key West. Nice. Really cool old welder. Um, he custom built this. He actually measured off this cable and then he went up to the house and measured this hard top with his genius mind, built this cage and it fits perfect. He also wow. did our wind generator mount. Nice. You prefer a hard top as opposed to like a cloth fabric bimini? I do because we'll never know the difference. Yeah. Um, this one never leaks. The sun never gets through. The rain never gets through. Uh, but the most important part about our catch rig and the reason we did this was it allows us to put solar on. Uh, yeah. We couldn't really come up with another way to put solar on. So what we did is we actually raised the mizzen boom from here. It used to be this high. Uh, Maybe we sacrifice a little performance, but we'll never know. Yep. And we got a lot of comfort out of it. That's awesome. And you said it's strong enough for you guys to be able to jump off of it and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. You get up there and jump off later if you want. So we have 210 watt soft panels. That's what we started with. Then we added the 290 watt hard panels, uh, totaling 600 watts. And then we got the wind generator up there, which can do another 400 when it's windy. So moving forward, we got our jerry cans here for extra diesel or extra gas for the dinghy. Sometimes we put extra water up here. We got our stay sail, which is really cool. It's a neat addition to the catch rig that we have the stay sail boom as well. We like to fly it when there's storms. We do the stay sail on the mizzen. I love the bowsprit. I love riding the waves, just standing up here. She adds an extra two to three feet to the boat, which makes our uh, head sail bigger as well, which is really cool, nice little advantage. So this is our manual windlass. We don't have um, automatic windlass or uh, electric windlass. We just have the manual windlass and we put our links of chain in here. This pole goes in here. You kind of crank it link by link when you can't pull the chain up by yourself. So yeah. it helps, but it's not an electric windlass. Still a lot of work. Yeah, it's link by link, but it helps for sure. All right, so I just want to ask you guys a couple questions because I think that it's really cool to have met you, especially being fellow young people, because, you know, being a young cruiser, it's kind of hard to find a lot of other young cruisers when you're out there. Yeah, totally. Um, so when you meet them, you kind of like get along and, and you bond. And so, Basically, what what inspired you guys to want to live this lifestyle? Well, when we first met, we did a little bit of traveling together, and we enjoyed it. Went around to Ecuador, Peru for like a month. And the thing that I hated the most about traveling is when you come back, you kind of you don't have anything to show for where you've been, what you've been doing for months. Um, you just have to come back home and start again pick up on your new job or your old job and start a new life with nothing really to show. So I kind of wanted something where I could travel with my home with everything that I love with me and not have to go back and start a new life every time I leave. Wow, that's so, a really good point. Yeah. That is spot on. Well, and you said that you are, or both of you are, like a captain certified? Yeah. So you worked on getting that before you bought the boat? I did. So I always loved the water. I didn't really know the sailing. I mean, I knew about the sailing life, but I didn't know that it was, like, possible to live out here and travel like this. Mm -hmm. But I always loved being on the water. I knew I wanted to be a captain since I was young and got my captain's license when I was 19 and then my 100 time when I was 21, so. Wow, so you've worked right into it. Yeah, perfectly. definitely. And Jesse, you said you did, you did what, jet ski tours? Jet ski tours. Yeah. yeah. In oh, Key yeah. West? In Key West for a very long time. That is part of what funded this boat pretty much, which is another cool 
aspect is that you know Sarah was running the ski boats for the company I was running the jet ski so we basically made the money to make this dream off other people's dreams kind yeah, of well, you know, and through being on the water and, right yeah. that's really cool yeah it's been two full time two years of working on the water living on the water and then working on the water yeah on the boat as well so my biggest piece of advice to the young cruiser would be to always remember that it is a marathon not a sprint because we burned ourselves out a couple times and the dream almost didn't happen from us just going so hard to achieve the goal so yeah i can um, totally yeah. relate to that it took us two totally. years to do it and it was a long two years we worked real hard now we're chilling harder so you've been fully living aboard now the day we got the boat. Wow, really? Yeah, there wow. was no like in between, no transition. You bought it and went for it. Yeah. And then so you're living aboard while doing all of the work that you've done. Yeah, living in a project sometimes is kind of hard. Yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, it can get overwhelming, like waking up and your home's a wreck and the floor is torn up. But I feel you there. I know, yeah. like with the work on mine, it, it definitely can be a little overwhelming sometimes, but I think it's really admirable that you guys have pushed through it and you're out here doing it, right? Yeah, like so many people get stuck in the in the fixing phase or like the never leaving the dock phase. And mm -hmm. so the fact that you guys are out here doing it is really incredible. What's like your dream? Like where would you want to where do you want to take this boat? Well, since we got the boat originally, I've always wanted to go back home to Saipan, which is where I'm from and where my mom's family's from. So I'd love to go back to the Mariana Trench where I came from sail back home, which is a big dream. What's your immediate cruising plan? Like, what's next for you? Um, well, we're kind of just waiting on our passports and then head up north to visit Jesse's father. And then after that, wherever we want, we're kind of going to go south, take our passports with us. We got our money saved up. And a big struggle with this lifestyle is, um, you know, keeping it going. And mm -hmm. so some people like either have to work remotely or whatever. So how are you guys kind of making this happen? Saved up a ton of money. Uh, we actually thought we were ready a couple times and then hauled out and spent the money we saved. And we're like, yeah. all right, we're not ready. Yeah. But now the boat's 100% ready. We're kind of learning what we can live off of, how much money we need to survive X amount of days mm -hmm. in different places. And um, we're learning right now. We're gonna shoot up to St. Augustine, see my pops and take it from there. Yeah. Um, we can always come back to Key West. We're set up to make decent money quick in Key West. Basically, took the leap, you quit your jobs, saved up, yeah. and now you're just free doing it. Free. Wow. We're free and we're hopefully run out of money somewhere cool where we can find a cool job. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. Well, good for you guys. I think it's really amazing what you're doing. It's been really cool to meet you. Yeah, and it was so cool hanging out with you guys. Yeah. Slacklining, that was dope. <laughs> And this is a yeah. really cool spot to be here in the Dry Tortugas. It is. Thank you guys for giving me a tour of your wonderful home. Yeah, thank, thank you for you. coming it's over. Been an absolute pleasure.